What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours through, of course, the Skyrender. And today we're going up against the Rude Leafstorm, who is also a Pocketuber, so his channel is going to be linked down below if anything. And he was looking for an OU game in my stream, and due to me having the same OU team for actually two months now, I decided that, yeah, I'm not going to bring it. I'm going to bring my newest OU team and hope it holds up. Now with that said, uh, this is not the preview I was looking for, it's definitely a tough team with Farrakhorn, Hoopa, Mew, Keldeo, uh, Gengar, and Mega Dayanchi, so... Ugh, it, it's tough, it's kind of fast, bit bulky, and um, I don't really know how to work around it that well. Uh, I myself need an Ace of Mega Torpedo, Jum Jum, the Darmanitan, Lucario, Tornadoes, and Hexers. Or Hex, no. Um, but in all that in mind, I decided that my safest lead would be Ace of because if it brings fair for Mew, which could be his obvious leads, I could go for knockoff, I can go for stealth rocks before his Mega the engine come in. Since he has no spinner outside of Mew, potentially wearing defog, I knew I can kind of work that in my favor. And all the residual damage is good. I know I can bring some force switches with tornadoes with tailwind and all. So um, yeah, stealth rock was important. It was my number one priority throughout this game. And um, yeah, fr from that situation, I'm just gonna try to avoid him off. Make sure not key important Pokemon are be killing fast, and uh, see if I can win this game. Which with this matchup is not very likely. So with all this, my guys, let's go. So yeah, I'm just gonna say it straight off the bat. This was not an ideal lead. He while I bring Aesol, which is of course like I said, it was my number one response. He brings the Mega the Energy straight off the bat, which means that he is gonna make a ball. It also means I can set up Stealth Frog. It also means that I presume <laughs> that he will go for Protect. Which means I can bring in Tornadoes. Tornadoes doesn't necessarily work really good this, this game. I basically was hoping to go for Tailwind and then from that position try to hurt stuff. And that was the only thing I had. Now, he's gonna go for another one, uh, Protect, which I felt was weird. Because I, if he has a Diamond Dust or Diamond Storm, uh, that's definitely gonna kill me. So, I was showing the Tailwind, now I know, or obviously I'm already faster, but I'm just going to go for a U-turn, expecting still Diamond Storm, or Moonblast, or whatever. I know Lucario can come in here, force it out, it's not going to get killed outside of him using Earth Power, but then again, I am floating, so why would it go for Earth Power, right? So, I thought that Virgil, the Lucario, is the best lead, or best switch in here. And of course, there is a Diamond Storm. Like I said, I felt that that could be a situation, and we're going to soak that really, really nicely. Now. I might have actually played my cards kind of weird here, because I could have just as well gone for Nora Sphere, but I went for Flash Cannon, I went for a stronger move against the Enchi. Nora Sphere would definitely be in the range of killing it, so there was no reason for me going for Flash Cannon, and obviously that is not helping. Now, his special defense does fall, which means that Nora Sphere is in range of taking him out, but I'm also showing that, you know, I am a specially offensive one, which means that he can be just playing the Blue Mew. And uh, of course, we are not gonna hurt this guy. There's just no way. Uh, so he's stalling out my tailwind just fine. And uh, as you guys can see, that's a very, very special defensive mon. That that that's not okay. That's that's seriously scary. So anyway, I'm actually gonna decide to bring Aesol back again. Um, now I'm in a position where I can at least go for a knockoff, taking off his item, and pretty much scout, you know, what it's all about. Uh, he's going for Psychic, luckily for me, which is still, you know, it does a fair amount of damage considering I have no investment whatsoever, obviously he has not either, so he's definitely he's able to win this matchup if uh, I don't play my cards right. Now, he's I'm obviously going for a knockoff, taking off his left tower, shutting him down, and he's going for another Psychic. Now, I assume that he's going to go for some kind of recovery here, so I felt that, alright, this is my chance to go for rocks, this is my only chance to go for rocks this game. Uh, so I took it, I really did, and here's the softball. Like I said, I did expect him to try to recover, and um, that was actually kind of risk of him considering that knockoff could have potentially killed him. Now, I decided to just go for explosion here, like, it served its purpose. Um, I need the damage off here and basically take him out. And we really, really are close to doing so, but uh, sadly we are not killing it, which sucks. It really does, but anyway, you know, it is what it is. I'm glad I got some momentum out of that. And I'm bringing back Tornadoes, and I'm just going to go for U-Turn, uh, U-Turn should be enough to kill it, and uh, basically I want to force in Amon here, I really do, so I decide to, um, if I go for a U-Turn, 
then yes, my opponent gets the momentum to choose his Pokémon. But if he decided to preserve it, I would actually get momentum out of that. But bringing Virgil, which is on the brink of death, was the most smartest choice, but it's not necessarily doing anything more in this game outside of killing the energies if Tailwind is up, which means that I need to get the Tailwind up, which is something that obviously won't do. So I'm just going for the Vacuum Wave, thinking it's going to go for Sacred Sword. But he's going to show me that it's a subset. Now, that's kind of okay. I know that Vacuum Wave will break through the Sash, or not break through it, but it will destroy the Sash. And uh, Sash, the, the, the sub, damn it. And obviously that's the play we we're going to go for. Now, I expect him to go for a Coal Mine. Um, if he went for um, an attack and move, that would obviously would kill me. But he would lose so much out of that, and I knew that. So, now I know a Vacuum Wave won't break his sub. But, at the same time, um, if I go for a Vacuum Wave, I should be close of actually making him not able to sub up. But, I was thinking that it might be um, too risky, so I decided to go for Nora Sphere in case he subs again. He doesn't do that play. I'm really glad of that because um, that actually makes him wide open for an attacking move from Tornadoes, which obviously has the Hurricane. And the um, Hurricane is definitely an area of killing him no matter how he plays it. And uh, he definitely got that and switched out. And uh, that works for me. So he's gonna bring Crystal Meth and we are landing the Hurricane. And uh, yeah, I mean, Tainashi is not liking attacks at all. And due to we have a 111 base speed, we are actually outspeeded with one base speed. Yeah, that's seriously one of those weird speed tiers, but it did work this time, and Grasnot is gonna finish that off. So Crystal Meth is no more, which means I don't need a Lucario anyway. And this time is actually going to bring the monster, the beast, the monster of monsters, is the Ringmaster Hoopa. And I played very, very badly here. Because, why would it bring this thing if you saw me have U-Turn? I should have gone for Tailwind, I decided to go for U-Turn, obviously, and really now, this was his best play. I was so frustrated over this because I realized that that was awful, awfully played by me. And he's now having an opening which he should not have gotten. I could just have gone for Tailwind and then bring in Dormanitan and win this game due to my choice of Bandit Flare Blitz. But no, we are gonna have this situation, and obviously, I'm just gonna go for Protect here. Uh, I need to speed up, and um, uh, I can't kill this thing, and it's very likely it has T-Wave. I'm banking on that to happen, so I decided to switch out here, and the Jum Jum is definitely not bearing this Pokemon as much. And if anybody, in, anybody's gonna take a T-Wave, this is gonna be the guy. Uh, I can't risk the Hex for it, because it still has that uh, setup move going, and it can, with a setup, outspeed Keldeo. So, um, yeah, just gonna spam myself into the Flare Blitz, that's my only chance I got right now, and uh, luckily for me I'm not fully paralyzed, which means that this Gengar is just gonna evaporate, if anything, out of this one. It's not taking it, it is not taking a banded Flare Blitz. Now, obviously, Keldeo is a thing here, and like I said, uh, I needed, or their Manitan Man was now the least important Pokémon because I can't outspeed Keldeo anyway. Uh, since I am banned and not scarfed. Now he's gonna go for a sub here, taking a chance of actually getting some momentum. Luckily again, I am not fully paralyzed and I can break through. Which is super 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 important and um, he is definitely down to the count. Now he will just finish me off here and uh, you know I get that. He could uh, risk it and sub another time, but then he would have been in an area where he would not take any kind of damage. Uh, but I was kind of banking on that, I really were, but you no, know, Jump Jump is gonna fall and that's okay, he got he got a Gengar kill, how often do you see that? And uh, we are basically gonna bring Hexers here, and the thing is here, I had two options. Either he's gonna sub up and I'm gonna screw up, that's a thing. Or I go for Dragon Dance, taking that chance of getting some extra damage on Veraforn, and uh, well, luckily for me he goes for Sacred Sword, he does and sub up which was super super nice and important. We go for Dragon Dance, obviously now we're out speeding and uh, we're basically sealing our fate here of being able to kill the Keldeo to hurt, or we actually are faster now than the Hoopa, which means he can't switch that in uh, after the Keldeo, he needs to go for Ferrofor now, he needs to uh, kill him with the Ferrofor, with the Jarable or anything like that. So Earthquake is definitely gonna kill it, it's no ramification of that and I can't lock myself with Outrage because he still got the Ferrofor after all and we're not hurting this thing with an Outrage, we're hurting this thing with Earthquakes. That's the only how and way we will, we will, we will win. Damn, I stumbled on that. 
So there's the Earthquake. It actually does some good amount of damage. It really, really, really does. But Jarabol is definitely going to finish her off. So, you know, Haxorus did fair here. It did fair. It definitely helped out. And our last Mon is, of course, a Sharpedo. But consider the range of HP we are in and the demons here I got left. And I did Mega Vault previously. I am now able to get my speed up, which actually makes me outspeeding his Scarfed Hoopa. Which also means that we got this game. His Ferroform can take a crunch, nor can his Hoopa from this range. So, that was definitely a very, very fun game against the Leaf Storm. Like I said, had I screwed up with that Tailwind, or had I not screwed up with that Tailwind against the Hoopa, this game would have ended much, much earlier. But it came down to a very close game due to that screw up. And honestly, this is what makes the games on. It's. It's not the plays, it's it's the screw-ups that, you know, decides the games, and uh, I think him losing you very early and not bringing uh, Diane check against my Azel definitely helped me find momentum out of this game, and we win this game 1-0, and it's a very, very close game, and like I said, Darude, thank you so much for this battle, it was incredible, good job, man, good job. So, right, some afterthoughts as well. You know, if, if I had to start with something, obviously I'm going to say that, you know, every turn does count. Uh, like I said, my screw-up definitely counts here, and it made a game, like I said, much, much closer. But also, my opponent did screw up a few times, too. Or actually had a few, two screw-ups that definitely was showcased. Of course, the first one being, when I go went for Tailwind with my Tornadoes, that they didn't go for Diamond Storm, that would definitely kill me. And though that would have forced my jump to come in safely. And the other screw up was, of course, him not actually working with this Mew. He actually lost me really early, and uh, that really made an opening for me. It, it definitely did. And like I said, it's not the good plays that matters, it's the bad plays that definitely counts. And there were ramifications for those plays, and it turned out to be quite a close game due to that. So, like I said, uh, that really leaves a good game. And for everybody else who's been watching, I think we're doing just so. Uh, make sure to leave a like and all, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye. Thank you.